Welcome back to Temple Customs. And on this Christmas episode, uh, I wanted to take a few minutes and um, focus on my family, my wife and my kids, and talk with them and discuss with them about the cars that they have purchased and other cars that you see on the Temple Customs YouTube channel. So hang around for the next 10 or 15 minutes and learn a little bit about the reasons why you see the cars that you see on this channel. We are going to start with Katie and um, go over the car that she has that you have seen um, a bunch of videos on. There's a whole playlist on it, but we'll start with Katie. What car is the car that you have on the channel and, and is your, your I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know if it's your dream car, but what, what car do you have outside that is your summer car? A 91 Corvette. Okay, so she has a 91 C4 Corvette that, uh, again, videos on it and is still kind of in the fix, fix it up stage. It's, it's getting better. Every yeah. video gets better. But um, it definitely needs some work, and we just got some approval recently to do some more work on it that I didn't think we'd get to, but that will be future videos when we do, I know, the cliche LS swap, but it is a GM car, so there's nothing wrong with doing an LS swap into a GM car. It's basically the same thing, just modernizing it. So that'll be future, but we are going to do that. It will bolt to her current six-speed, so that's great. So for you, and you always have from when we started dating, I took her out in a Corvette a C4 vet when we started, uh, not dating, but one of our dates, one of our mm -hmm. main big days, an anniversary date or something like that, to go out in a C4 Corvette. And then again, I borrowed that same C4, C4 Corvette when I proposed. So we had that out on that date. So we had that. But that wasn't why you liked Corvettes. You liked Corvettes before that, and thus why I got the Corvette to take you out on those dates. What is it about Corvette or that Corvette or any Corvette that, well, why do you like Corvettes? I've always liked them. I've always liked the lines. So I love my body style, but the older body styles are my favorite, especially with the big curvy Your Your, your ultimate fenders. favorite would be like a 71 Stingray. Yes. Um, yeah, so a C3 somewhere in the C3 range would be your ultimate, but you like the flat back window of like a 71, 73, mm -hmm. where the back window looks flat. Yep. And it almost looks very similar to Sam Fiero, how the back end of those yes. are. That's yes. your, your ultimate favorite yes. Corvette. I do not like the newer ones. C8s to her are not Corvettes at all. Nope. Um, but, so is, is it, is it, is it purely the look of them? Is there anything else about the car that like, that's like, you know, or has it always just been the, the look of the Corvette? It's always been the look, not necessarily the sound. Okay. But dang, are they fun to drive. After having one, yes. <laughs> and, it, and getting it running as well as we've gotten it, yes. They are an amazing are car to drive. fun to drive. Yeah, so. Um, any other car that if you had the opportunity other than a, a C3, would you would you be like, oh, that is my other car that I, I really want? A Miata. You you go with a Miata? Oh yeah, I've you, always liked the Miata. Yeah, you you've, you've driven a couple of those. Yeah, those are fun too. Those are like little go karts as yes. well. So yes. And uh, my nephew and well, two of our nephews now have Miatas. Mm -hmm. um, but well. With that, we will end that part with you, and 
will go into the kids and not only the cars that they, you know, dreamed of having as, as first cars, they've actually gotten as first cars. So this is the newest member of the family. This is Alyssa. You've seen her in um, other videos, our trip to California, um, the cooking with Alyssa videos that got one out of those, but um, you do not currently have a car that's yours. No. Like you, you have the Forester, that's your car, but you don't have the fun car. No. What is the fun <clears throat> car that you want? There's two. Okay. I know one of them, I'm pretty sure. But I don't know what year the one is. Okay, I, I actually uh, I don't really technically know the year of either. The other the other doesn't doesn't matter because they're like Jeeps, they're all the same. Okay. The one of them. Okay. So what are the two? I want a Bronco. Okay, Bronco. Yep. Like a older Bronco. Kind of like like the Reeves Bronco, like Betty. Yes. Okay, like Betty Boop. Yeah. And then I want a thing. Yeah, the thing is the one that I know that Kobe and I have been looking for. Like oh, not looking for, oh. but we are. Whenever we see one on Facebook, we'll send it to each other. Like marketplace, like oh look, there's one for sale. Gotcha. And we never can afford them because they're like forty thousand dollars for a good one, yeah. seventeen thousand dollars for a bad one. It's fine. We can just be like the um, the Flintstones. That's right, because they usually don't need. have a floor in them. Usually yeah. they don't have a floor. <laughs> but so I was when, when I did when I thought this, my thought was the Volkswagen thing because that's the one that you'll probably get before. Uh, an, a Bronco? A, a Bronco. Maybe. Probably. 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 Because Broncos are even more expensive sometimes than things. Yeah. So, so the question I have, and this is the question I have for everybody and for this video is, why? What draws you to a thing? What makes you go, that's the vehicle that I want? I think it's so ugly that it's awesome. Okay. <laughs> that's it. That's it? That's it. Do you have any experience with things? No. You've, have you ever ridden in a thing? No. So you know nothing <laughs> about a thing? No. You just decided that it's so ugly that it's cool. Yeah. I don't know. When Kobe and I were dating, he showed me a picture of a thing, and I was like, that's pretty sick. I kind of think I want that. And that's that. Do you want an all original thing? Do you want a custom thing? Do you want to get it all original and make it your own? What, when, when you visualize yourself driving a thing, what does it look like? Uh, I mean, I feel like I think of the classic yellow. Okay. Classic, like, Volkswagen thing yellow. Other than that, I don't know. Other than, like, the scenery. I can, like, picture myself at a beach or in a mountain driving. Okay. That's it. I don't know anything about cars. So well, that's, that's okay. kind of it. <laughs> that's okay. But you you picture it being a, a, a pretty much stock as it came from the factory thing. Yeah. But I don't think I'd be opposed to making it unique. Okay. And doing some kind of build like you've done with Rusty or Ruby or whatever. But I don't know. I guess like the first thought would probably just be like the classic, what yeah. everybody thinks of thing. thing. Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, but that's okay. So you'd be fine with a normal every day out of the factory thing, but mm -hmm. you know, once you've gotten it, then you can modify it to make it your own and that's okay yeah. as well. So, mm -hmm. okay, that's, that's all I wanted to know. That's all this video is about, just to figure out what and why you are drawn to the car you are. Um, real quick then, let, 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 let's hit the Bronco really quick. Okay. Why, why, why a Bronco? Ooh, okay. Because those are not ugly. I can, Cause, no, Because the, the, the year you're thinking about is like in the, is the 70s, like 73, 74, I think that's that's the year that the the Reeves have. I think there's a seventy three or seventy four. So okay. it's that old body style, um, first gen okay. Bronco. Well, I can tell you. So, my grandfather, who has passed away, loved Fords. Okay. Like if you didn't drive a Ford, you were just wrong. And so in my heart, I've always had. Ooh, I'm touching the mic. It's okay. I've always had a special place for Fords. And so I think when, again, Kobe told me about the Bronco, I was, I really loved the look of it, but also it kind of just was like, if I were to ever get a Ford, it would probably be a Bronco, and it just kind of brings back that memory of my grandfather. Okay. Yeah, those are just going up in price. Like, finding a Bronco, 
I know. Yeah, that's... It's going to be impossible. It's not going to be impossible. It's just going to have to wait till we can make some money on this channel <laughs> so that we can then buy one and then have sponsors sponsor the, all the things we need, need to do to repair yeah. that Bronco that we spent too much money on for not enough Bronco. So. Yeah. Okay, so that's well, where you look at the camera and you say, We need sponsors. Follow Luke and sponsor him. He's a really cool guy. Two thumbs. <laughs> Two thumbs up. Okay, well, that is it. That's all I wanted to get with Alyssa and uh, figure, find out that little information. And next, I will bring in one of the other peoples in the family. I don't. Is there a cat behind me? It's Batman. Hi, Fiona. So, okay, <laughs> thank you very much, Alyssa. You're welcome. Good doing business with you. Yes. <laughs> Wait. Okay, now we have Kobe. This is my oldest son. And um, there will be definitely be videos on the channel coming up with him. Um, not only on his vehicles, but actually he's going to be actually um, recording some videos for the channel on his cars he's working on. Um, so you might as well tell I me, mean, people probably know because they've seen him in the background, yes. but what are the current cars that you own? That I own would be my 92 R32 Skyline and my 97 uh, Nissan Stasia. Okay. So... The Skyline you imported yourself. You picked it out of the um, off the website yep. from Japan. Yep. And imported that car before the boom and the explosion of price on those. Yes. And if anybody's curious, he imported the '92 Skyline GTS base model for under five thousand dollars, brought to the door, yes. which is just crazy priced. Because yes. now the price you can't even find them for before sale for less than that. Yeah. Um, and then the Stasia, you also did the same thing. You went on same there, thing. you found the car you wanted, yes. talked to the importer or the, the, the um, broker and imported it. And again, it, that car showed up actually after you left for California. It did. So, I bought it before leaving yeah. and then got here a few months after we got out there. I don't even know it was a few months. It was probably a, maybe maybe a, a week or two. A couple of weeks, I think, yeah. it showed up after you left for California. Yeah. So that car, I drove it a couple of times, but mostly sat till he just got home here short, uh, a little bit ago. Yep, and then I, I daily drive that car. I drive that right. everywhere. That's just in the snow, salt. We have to make yep. sure we get some fluid film on that thing. Yeah, but do our best. Uh, it's what it is. It's 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 a it's a, it's a again a base model. Yep, low right mileage. Now, yeah. And what what did that one import for? That was the same, just under five. Just under five to the door. It's crazy. Yes. Um, of the two, which is your car? Like, what do you mean? Of the two, which is the car that... Someone said you have to get rid of one of them right now. Right now on spot, I'd get rid of the Stagio. Just right. because the Skyline currently is, is a great car. Which is what I thought. Okay, yeah. that was my thought. I gave, the, the Skyline is your car. Yes. Okay. So, why is the Skyline your car? Ooh. Like, I mean... Oh, I mean, you are a car guy. You love cars. You love any car. Yeah, I mean, I mean there's I very, There's very few things that you'd be like, oh, that's gross. And you wouldn't drive. No, I'm joking. Yeah. Um, but you settled, I guess settled, you chose a Skyline. Yeah. There could have been a ton of cars in the States for under five that you could have bought. And that's why. Skylines you can't get in the States. Okay. So that was a big thing. But also, like, I grew up watching Fast and Furious and uh, Need for Speed and, like, all those games. I mean, you and my uncles, like, you guys were always playing Need for Speed and Forza. Forza. Yep. And so, like... Growing up watching those racing games and seeing these cars that we didn't have in the States. And then especially like Paul Walker drove the R34 in Fast and Furious. And we didn't have those in the States till this year. They weren't legal till this year. But I've always loved the R32. I mean, there was the Calsonic R32. Oh, yeah, yeah, that and that's just an car. iconic. I mean, great race car. that's the race car that got, got the nickname the Godzilla. Right. And like, so it was just... That was just a car that I grew up loving, and when I saw that I could get one, I was like, why not? Right, and then it's currently on a... After you got it, it got... For Christmas, you got spoiler off of a R33. R34 GTT. Oh, sorry, R34 GTT. And then you got rear over fenders, mm -hmm. you got GTR front aluminum fenders. Yep. Fiberglass front bumper. Yep. And um, so basically, it's kind of your own... Your own take it's on a, a hodgepodge, I guess you could right. say. It's but your own, it's it's your own custom. Yeah. 
GTR, uh, GTST, yeah, ish, whatever yeah. you want to call it. I also put a turbo on it. And... Right. So now it's GTST ish, and then that's when these next videos are going to be coming out shortly. He just picked up the RB25 engine for it. That's yes. going to go into there because the Stasia is uh, auto with an RB20 single overhead. Correct, so the RB20E. Right, Yeah. so the RB20 that's currently in the Skyline, which is the dual overhead, yes. which is the D-E-T? D-E D -E plus T, yeah. technically. That engine and transmission combo with the manual will go into the Stasia, and then the RB25 and I th you figure it, it's a 300ZX transmission that'll back it. Yes. That will then go into the Skyline. It'll handle more horsepower. Not that you're going to go trying to go crazy horsepower. You 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 want you want good horsepower on a reliable basis. Yes. Is what you're so looking for. I'm 400 horsepower. I should be able to. Which is more than reliably. enough for a two wheel drive car. It's more than enough for a rear wheel drive car right. for the street. That's what I mean. Yeah, rear wheel drive. I'm not going to be like racing or anything. Maybe I'll take it to a track day here and there, right. if that. But right. It's going to be a street car. So. Okay. So yeah. You've heard that there will be more coming up on that car for sure, yes. especially once the once. Oh, I, don't, I almost just slipped. They don't know what's happening outside. Oh, I almost just slipped on that. So yes, um, yeah. So that's Kobe's car, and that's why he went with what he went with. And um, next, I will bring in um, probably, Andrew. Probably Drew. Yeah, and. Uh, We'll figure out why he picked the car he picked. This is Andrew. This is my middle son. And you have seen videos on his car's car. He has the red Porsche 944 that for the longest time would leave the house and never return um, without being on a flatbed. So It was only once. No. Well, the flatbed was the once. The flatbed was only once. Not returning to the house. With multiple times. I think that was three times. It At broke. least three. We snapped an axle. We snapped another axle. Fuel, fuel pump, pump. pump failed. I think that was it. Is that it? I think that's it. Didn't you run out of fuel? No, that was the fuel pump. Oh, okay. Okay, so at least three times. But that was right when we got it running. So the question for you is, you picked up a 1986... Yeah, 1986 Porsche 944, correct? Yeah. yeah. Why? Why that car? So I like the style of the car. Okay. I was debating between going to a 924 and 968. Uh, I do believe the 968. They're, they're all similar. They're all very style. similar, yes. I did my research on them. I sort of went away from the 968 because I don't like the headlights of it. I like because they're just ovals that pop up. They're already inset into the car. Kind of like the like like the nine two eight has. Yeah, yeah nine two eight. I like the nine two eight lights, but yeah, okay. I more like the actual flip up out of the hood, and if they're down there, it's a nice, right, solid hood. And I did my research between them, and I found out the nine four four was a more reliable between the batch of them. And do we do this around the word reliable? Yes. Okay. For the year when they were produced, it was more reliable got it. at the year of production of the vehicles. Got it. Got it. Got it. And there were a lot more of them produced, so there should should be easier to find parts for the car. Okay. Um, that's got the what size engine is that? It's two point four liter. It's a two point four inline four. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't remember how many liters it was. Okay. It's a two point four. I didn't get the two point five. Do they go up to a two point? Is, it, is that, that the S? And the S is a two point five. Okay. So. Um, I mean, other than the fact that it has a really rough idle oh, on it when horrible. it starts. When it cold starts, it's terrible. And we're still working on that. Um, it Once we figure out the cold start, it warms up and runs just fine. Oh, yeah, after it's warming up, it runs just fine. I mean, again, that was your daily all summer. Once once we fixed, once we the, fixed, fuel, the, once we fixed the fuel pump issue yeah, and then oh, the spark. We also fi fixed the... Uh, Crank sensors that we had no idea were there till I did more research. Oh, this is right, yeah, because it had crank sensors on it. That's so what killed the car for a month. Once, once, once all that's been fixed, he literally has been driving. That was his daily all summer long, up until the first snowfall that we had. He drove the 944 yeah. every single day, which again is great for a car that's that old. Yeah. And that was kind of unproven to us until because it kept breaking. It literally well, it kept, kept breaking. Breaking. 
When we first got it, we knew it had an oil leak. We replaced right. that seal. That took about two weeks to fix it, finally get that done. Then we had no more oil leak, and it ran right. fine right. until we started running to the... Right, a couple odds and ends we did. A couple so. odds and ends. But, I mean, you, you've always been a Porsche person. Yeah. You've always liked Porsche 911s is, was, you know, probably... I would say 911s would draw you to Porsche, drew you to yes. Porsche, because you've always liked the 911. Um, but 911s are kind of still a bit out of the price They're, range. I mean, they were only, what, 50,000 times the price of what I paid for my car? Right, would you end up with, what, 32? <laughs> I think it was, yeah, I think it was 32,000. 32 or 33,000. Not 1,000, 100. Yeah, 30, I think it was 3,200 bucks. I think it's, it might be one of the videos. I don't remember if we yeah. have it. But again, for a car that you ended up getting, you daily drive. Yeah. And has been really reliable After since we've, we've since, done, gone through it. Yep. I, I can't say that you got a bad deal on that car at all. I so. don't think I did either. That is Andrew and his uh, Porsche, our 86 Porsche 944. And um, why he bought that car as his first car. So next will be uh, Sam. We'll, uh, he's at work right now, but when he gets home, we will talk to him. It's a couple hours later now. Sam's home from work, so we will continue on with uh, the one question that we're asking. And uh, that question is, is, well, first off, what car do you have? I have a Pontiac Fiero. 87. 87 Pontiac Fiero, right. Um, which, again, you've seen multiple episodes. You've seen multiple episodes of that on the channel already. Um, the question is, why a Pontiac Fiero? Because um, you looked at a bunch of different cars for a while. For a while, you were looking at um, 80s Dodge Daytonas. Mm -hmm. um, you looked at uh, 80s Trans Ams for a little bit. You were even, I think, Camaro uh, Gen 3 or Gen, Gen 3 Camaros, Gen 2 Camaros. Gen 2 or Gen 3 Camaros. Yeah, Whatever yeah. they 80s Camaros. I, think yeah. that's, I don't know what generation that is. So, but then all of a sudden you settled on and focused in on Fieros. Well, 80s cars are just the best. I love 80s cars. Right. Um, and the... Fiero is the closest size to my favorite car, which is a Ford GT40. Um, I like the rear engine. Uh, I like the single cab. And it, oh, I just like the car in general. So, so I mean, if you spent $2,700 on that car. Yes. Which, for a car that you've been driving... I mean, other than the fact that when we got into it, you know, the videos that we saw, there two we, grand on parts. I well, not quite two grand, but it's, it was close. There. It was close. I mean, with the cradle and the seat and drive the, shafts or, or, or trailer, half shafts, uh, clutch, clutch, um, taillights. Those weren't needed. I mean, they weren't needed. So for things that weren't needed, you put wheels on it. I did. So, but. As things that were needed that we had to do when you bought it was basically the clutch and the cradle. And I guess, I mean, actual technically now. Cause we now, because uh. the boot ripped. Again, the, the boot was just old. Um, and it's a car that you drive every day. Mm -hmm. now, now that the clutch has been fixed, yeah. you drive it pretty much every day. Uh, we're, we're now, and, and as we talked about with Andrew's Porsche, now that you're driving it every day, things are falling apart on it. That's... Yeah. Wouldn't have been otherwise. Yeah. Um, we've got a vacuum leak. We think it's got a surge at idle. Uh, so we're assuming we have a vacuum leak. Somewhere. So a vacuum hose may have uh, broken or ripped. Had electrical issues recently. What was the electrical issue? ICM uh, distributor. Oh, distributor cap. yeah. The um, he, he lost all spark, and so we replaced the uh, ICM. Solved it instantly. But again, that could have been the original one. Yes. Um, and then we were in there, we put a new distributor, our new distributor cap, new rotor, and in doing so, one of the screws stripped in the distributor, or on the distributor cap, so there's a couple options from that that we will get into on another episode, but for a car that was relatively inexpensive, was a rare option car at the time, being blue, with the gray stripe originally. With, also with uh, the luggage rack. Luggage rack on a GT Fastback. 
that wasn't a very common um, optioned car. So, and it's got the six speed uh, or five five speed get rag yes. transmission. So, um, but yeah, just going over to see why why that car was your first car. Why you decided that that was the car you wanted when you had a bunch of other cars that you were looking at. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, just. And, and knowing that the GT40 is one of your favorite cars, and it does kind of fit into that, and, and it is kind of that car to a degree. Yeah, I mean, though, there's body kits I could put right on it. You, you could put a GT40 <laughs> body kit right on it. Um, actually, I think the GT40 is longer, but shorter. Yes. And the Fiero is taller, and but smaller. shorter, yep. which is kind of interesting. So, um, So that is... Sam's Fiero, and why he decided that he wanted that to be his car. Okay. All right, so it's your turn for questions. Okay. So, I know what your favorite car is. Right. I forget it all the time. You do? I know it's a Z. It is a Z car. But the specifics of it... It is my all-time favorite car... Hi, Willie. Come on. My all-time favorite car from when I was growing up, and and, and basically, well, 91 would have been when, well, 90, I guess. 90 would have been the time when I fell in love with that car. And in 90, I would have been 13, 14, Mm -hmm. somewhere around there. It is the 300ZX Nissan. Twin turbo. Twin turbo, and it has to be blue. Oh, yeah, it has to be blue. Yeah. Um, I, I've, I've had the name for the car since that long, and the plate would be T-R-B-O-B-L-U, turbo blue. Turbo blue. That would be the license plate. I've already had it picked out, even though I've never even been close to owning one. And before you say it, yes, I know they're awful cars as far as engine-wise goes. They're terrible fuel injection. When it goes wrong... It all goes wrong. I don't care. <laughs> that is my car. I, the, the, the body line on that car is just the sexiest thing out there. So that, is, that, that would be my all-time favorite car, or my all-time dream car to have. Yes. And around here, they're just rusted out as well. I mean, if I was going to get one, I'd have to go south because nothing up here in Ohio or in the surrounding states is going to be any good because they do just rust away uh, up here. Yep. And what would be your second? Um, My second, I think I have. I really do believe Rusty Rusty or (laughs) Ruby. I, and I I don't even know, I mean, I I said, I don't know why I love them so much. It would have to come back to, again, growing up when Chad got his, 84 Mm -hmm. and it was one of the first vehicles that i was able to completely disassemble with him and work on as a you know brothers bonding and getting to that age where we were not bickering anymore that does happen oh it still happens (laughs) to a degree but you you get to that age where you where you're no longer bickering with your brother and you're more friends Mm -hmm. and you're more working with each other and and that I think kind of happened around that time because he, I would have been 15, 16 ish. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause it was right before I got my license. So it probably, been, or in, and during when I got my license, he had it when I was driving. So it'd been 15, 16 and he was probably 19, 20, 21, somewhere around there. So um, it was a vehicle that we tore down completely and rebuilt completely. And it was the first vehicle we'd done that with. And I think that's what kind of endeared CJ7s into, like, that's, I, I want one. I don't know if it brings back that time or just that body style has just always been great. Right. And driving around with the top off. And when I got rusty and now he's in, now he's going back together, but kind of stalled with what's going on at the house right now. Yeah. Um, but getting Ruby up and running and driving Ruby to work for a few times. The, the, the list of cars that I would want 
would be never ending. Um, Plymouth Superbird. I've, I've always wanted one of those, or, or, or Dodge Daytona of that era. Never going to have one. Can I add a gremlin to my list? Uh, we can get you a gremlin. Gremlins are easy to get a hold of. They're cool. But, you know, I, I, I'd never be, be able to, to get one of those. Um, but that's kind of like with the Z as well. I, 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 the Z would have been my first project car. Mm -hmm. I just can't afford one. I can't afford one in a condition that is drivable. Right. So that's why the Jeep, way more affordable in the condition it was in. And basically that was starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. Because I bought I bought Rusty for like thirteen hundred bucks, but I threw away ninety percent of it. Yeah, I I would say as of now for where we are uh, financially set, Rusty and Ruby are my vehicles. Eventually, maybe run into a Z. Yeah, I would definitely do a a three hundred ZX. And with that, we will end this episode. Uh, I want to wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas. Uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week into the new year. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope everybody has a great week.